Good afternoon, thanks for having me here today. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a project that I'm pioneering with my undergraduate survey course this semester. But first I need to give you a little bit of background information on what it is that I do. So I teach music history here at the University of Hartford. And when I go home uh, for the holidays or run into a friend on the street that I haven't seen in a while and they ask me what it is that I do, that's what I tell them. I say, I teach music history at the art school. And they say, wow, that's great, fascinating music. What do you play? And I say, well, yeah, okay, I get that a lot. So I smile, I laugh a little bit, and I say, yeah, I perform, I'm a performer, but when I teach here at Heart, I teach music history, and I sort of emphasize that word history a little bit. And they, the smiles fade a little bit, or the eyebrow goes up, and they say, oh, okay, so you don't, you don't play. Um, are you sure? What do you teach? So I get that question a lot, what do you teach? And that's a complicated question. So usually the easiest way for me to describe it to whomever I'm talking to, which is you, I say, I, I teach whatever classes I'm teaching this semester. This semester, if you were to ask me, I would say, I'm teaching the undergraduate history survey course on medieval through Baroque music. And for those of you that might not be up on your musical eras, that's a little over 1,800 years of music history in 15 weeks. Yikes. That's daunting, people will say. How do you do that? What do you teach? So I keep getting this question, what do you teach? But every time it takes on a little bit of a new meaning. What do I teach in that context means how do you shoehorn 1,800 years of history into 15 weeks? You can't tell everyone's stories. So who do you teach? What do you choose? How do you prioritize? And that's a tough question. How do I figure out what it is that I need to teach? Do I get into depth on any one subject matter or person or piece? And if I do, at whose expense is it? Or do I hop from iceberg to iceberg, giving my students the tiny little tips of icebergs and never get their toes under the water? And if so, at what expense is that? What do I teach? And more that question is, what do I choose to teach? What should I teach? And it's a moral and ethical question, I feel. Uh, and on some level, that decision is made for us by whatever textbook we happen to be using, which is awfully handy. So that gives us another thing to think about, which is that not all textbooks are created equally. If I were teaching this class 100 years ago, I might have been using a book called Great Men and Their Works, where we would take a small detour through a few select white German men and their best compositions, which leaves a lot out of the story, does it not? What if we get into the 1930s and we have a textbook called The Progress of Music? Well, now music is a process. It's something that develops, it evolves. That's fine, but doesn't that sort of insinuate that music keeps getting better every year? Does that mean that music that I'm teaching this semester in the medieval through Baroque periods is bad? Is it worse? Is it primitive? These are loaded terms. What do we do with that? What about textbooks we use today? How about history of Western music or the history of music in Western culture? Well, at least we're getting the word history, that's fine. But what does Western culture mean? Who's West? Is this Western Europe? Is this the Western Hemisphere? Is this the wild, wild West? Is this West Hartford? Who's West is this anyway? And what does it mean to be cultured? When I crack open the textbook I'm using this semester, I don't see a chapter on Native American traditions, but last I checked, that was Western culture too. Who's West and who's culture? Who gets to be good enough to be considered culture? These are the questions that I grapple with when I plan out a course or when I figure out what I'd like to teach my students any given semester. The question isn't what I teach, but what should I teach? What, what should I teach? This is something that I, that I wrestle with. And so this semester, I decided to start off my semester by asking my students that very question, and I drew them into that conversation. And I did so specifically because they themselves raised this question in one of those pivotal moments that every professor hopes to have with their students one semester, um, the moment where they critiqued their textbook, and it was glorious. They, we were studying the music of Stephen Foster. And they noticed that the textbook went into some great detail about parlor music, this uh, middle class, upper class genre for people who were wealthy enough to afford a piano in the 19th century. And the textbook went into some detail on this genre and mentioned in passing that Stephen Foster also happened to compose minstrel songs for the vaudeville circuit, music that often negatively stereotyped African Americans. And the students raised an eyebrow, raised a hand, and they said, wait a second, 
that sounds interesting. I want to know more about that. Why, isn't, why is that glossed over? Why isn't that the centerpiece of this chapter? That seems to resonate with today. What are we doing here? What, where are those stories? Where is the music of the African Americans that are getting mimicked here? Why is it about Foster and not about them? How do we make sense of this phenomenon that in modern society might be considered racist, but maybe wasn't at the time? How do we reevaluate the past? And they were fascinated by this. And so we talked a little bit about some resources they could use to read up on this uh, on their own time. I don't know if anybody did. But uh, uh, we talked a little bit about what goes into your average textbook. I don't know about you all, but I know that for me, when I was first presented with these beautiful tomes of knowledge as an undergrad, I thought that they were the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And you don't realize what goes into the process of, of selecting what goes into a book. And so based on that conversation, I was inspired to create this people project that we're working on this semester in class. I started off class by asking them to revisit that conversation that we had had on Stephen Foster. And not surprisingly, most of them remembered. I said, I'd like for you all to start brainstorming. I'd like for you to think about other types of people that get left out of the book. Whose music don't we study? Whose stories don't show up in your book? Who don't you learn about? Who might you want to learn about? Are you in this book? Is there a you person in our story this semester? And slowly but surely, people started to come up with ideas. They saw on the syllabus that we were going to spend some time with Gregorian chant, and they said, were there non-Christians making music at this time, or was it all Christian? Is it all sacred? What did people sing at home? Did they sing chant at home, or did they have songs down at the pub? What is going on here? Whose music don't we study? And slowly but surely, they came up with more and more and more ideas. Female composers, children, students, teachers, parents, friends, rivals, enemies. One student in a moment of brilliance says, why do we only study good music? Where's the bad stuff? Do we ever get to learn about bad music or bad composers? And I said, yes, that's what I want you guys to think about. And so what they're doing this semester is each person has selected or was assigned a type of person that they are tracing over the course of this entire semester throughout the whole entire medieval, renaissance, and baroque periods. They're working with our librarians and myself to use library research methods, Googling effectively, <laughs> looking at scholarly journals, things like Wikipedia, encyclopedias, looking at unconventional resources like liner notes of recordings, blogs, websites. Where can they go to find out these stories? And maybe along the way they're learning why those stories aren't typically given much press in your average textbook. What I'm doing with them is a prototype. I don't know really where this project is going to go, but for now at least, they're making an annotated bibliography for, their for themselves and for their peers, a one-stop shop that they can go to look up what a typical type of person might have been doing at any given moment. And some of them have gotten a little inspired by this. They want to present their ideas to their classmates. One student even suggested that they do a type of speed dating where they could go around the classroom and figure out which people might have connected at any given moment. Would they have known one another? Would they have been the same person, in fact. So we have plenty idea of ideas as to how to make this project come to life in class, but at least for now, it gives them exposure to doing research methods. But more importantly, what it's teaching them is to read between the lines in their textbooks, knowing that no one book can tell everyone's stories. Where can you go to find out about other folks? How can we make sense of the past using modern eyes? Is there a reason why certain people have been left out? They're learning the history of music history, how these sorts of things have come to pass and why we have a canon today. And this is particularly exciting to me because it refocuses them on the humanity that we're studying. It's not just music or compositions or notes on a page. It's the story of people. And by doing so, especially as musicians and students and people in 2015 in a global community, it allows them to forge uh, a better understanding of who them, they themselves are as musicians and as people. When we interpret the past in more different ways, objective ways, you start to learn a little bit more about how you yourselves operate these days. And that's what I'm really trying to teach, knowing that I can't tell every story in full depth. I have to be able to give them the tools to go out and find these stories on their own. So when somebody asks me what it is that I teach, 
It's a complicated question. I, I'm not going to give them this whole entire speech. But it's important to recognize that when somebody says, what do you teach? It's more about whose music is it that I'm expecting people to know? Whose music is it that is important? And it's all important. So my students are learning how to think about whose music has gotten into the book, but more importantly, whose music they're choosing to study, whose music they're choosing to listen to, whose music do they go out into the library and research, whose music are they going to perpetuate, and what are those stories? And that is actually what I teach. Thank you. <laughs>